And we're live. What's going on, boss? Oh, you know. Oh, you know. Uh, all right. <laughs> wow. Hello again, everyone. I am Nick. I'm Eric. Together, we're Talk Interference Sports. Just two guys who enjoy talking about sports and decide to make a show of us talking about it. Um, we have a live chat on Facebook. Thanks, bro. I went and got it on Sunday when it was freaking snowing. So, you know, that was a smooth move. I immediately questioned that choice. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out of the haircut place and it was pretty brutal. But, uh, yeah, we're live on Facebook on the Game Changer Sports Network. If you're not following Game Changer Sports Network, find them on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and Facebook. If you're watching us on YouTube, that is. And if you are watching us on YouTube and you're not following our pages, we're talking interference in sports. You can find us on all of those platforms as well. If you guys are going to an event, say it's a sporting event or Justin Timberlake at the Tacoma Dome next week, whatever floats your boat, go to SeatGeek.com and use promo code GCSN and get $20 off of your purchase. All right, and then Jeff's Basement, big shout-out to those guys. They're doing pretty cool stuff, Brendan and Jeff. Go check out their podcast. They're on Facebook as well. All right, you need the thing in front of your <laughs> mic, though. It looks pretty foul. Oh, man, okay. Damn. Harsh call out, bro. Harsh call out, bro. All right, man, well, we've officially made it past an entire NFL season. Yeah. The freaking NFL season is over. Done. And we have recorded more weeks than the season was. So, cheers. We're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Refuse to lose. That's right. Um, Super Bowl is over. And as Devin said it, Tom Brady is the GOAT. <laughs> 13 to 3. 13 to 3. It's concluded. It's over. Yeah. 2018 20 or 19 season is in the books. The Patriots winning their sixth championship. Congratulations to Julian Edelman for winning MVP with 10 catches and 141 yards. What's going on, Dennis? Thanks for joining us. Uh, Edelman has officially tied Cowboys legend Michael Irving. For Irvin, excuse me, I said Irving. Irvin. For the second most 100 yard postseason games of all time, he and Michael are second with Jerry Rice, the greatest wide receiver oh. ever, with eight. So there are, Edelman only needs two more postseasons with 100 yards in a game, and he passes the GOAT of wide receivers. That's what happened crazy. to Gurley in that game, though? Yo, I don't know, man. I Do you well, have a speculation on that one? Man, I, I actually did see something about the uh, Sean McVay talking about this, but I was like, eh, Super Bowl's over. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just look at the last uh, couple of games until, uh, what was it, the – he hadn't really been doing much until the Cowboys game with, um, you know, getting over 100 yards in that game. And then it followed up with the next game against uh, New Orleans with 10 yards. Yeah. So I think it was – but I don't know if it was – I just think he wasn't the the he's the hot running back for that team right there. So CJ you know, Anderson was killing it anyway. Right. So, so th they stuck with the guy who was having the most success, I think, is what happened to him. To Gurley in the Super Bowl. It happens, man. Your job is never secure in the NFL. Well, and I mean, in two months, it might be we hear from the Rams, you know, in classic Seahawks fashion, was like, oh, he was playing injured all year. Yeah, he or had something a like that. Torn ACL with a missing right. elbow cap. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you didn't realize he was running on a prosthetic leg all year? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no, I didn't. Um, so sorry, I was on the can. It's all good, Justin. No worries. That game was garbage, is what he says. 
Dennis says, nice try. Told you last week I had money on the Pats. This is going back to the entire season, Dennis. Yo, you guys back and forth, man. Check this out, though. I said that the Rams were going to win, but I put money on the Pats. And I love it. <laughs> I feel good about it. Feel good. You shouldn't. You're a, I do. You flip flop. No, man, you know, I got to be honest with you, dude. Like, I would honestly, I, I do kind of, now, now that I look back on it, and obviously it has already happened, but I'm not, like, changing my mind. I would have liked to seen the Patriots lose, but it's nice to see the Rams lose. Man, so, NFC divi- division. Rival. I was going to say, yeah, for that yeah. reason alone, I wanted, I was like, I don't want the Rams to win I because they're, you know, they're the direct competition of the Seahawks. So, yeah, I was super stoked. That Where's they your lost. boy Jay at? I, dude, I haven't MIA? heard from him. <laughs> He's I haven't heard him since before the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I texted All him right, afterwards talk. and I said, sucks to suck. <laughs> I haven't heard from him since. Oh, man. Probably won't for a while. He went MIA, man. (laughs) Yeah. He kept coming in here saying, oh, look at the Rams. Look at the Rams. Yeah, look at the Rams. Yeah. They're the second best team (laughs) in the NFL. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. Sorry, Saints fans. Sorry. Yeah. (laughs) First call out, man. Oh, well. It is what it is. Yep. It's over now. And I know that was a very defensive game, and the Pats were – the defense for the Patriots was on fire and not really letting the Rams do anything. Not at all what I was expecting in this game. No. Um, And I felt very disappointed with the conclusion. Um, I would have much rather seen if it was going to be this outcome, the Pats end up with like 28, 30 more points than they had just so we could have had something a little bit more to watch than just a defensive game. Yeah, and I heard a lot of people, you know, saying we're like, well, you know, you you just don't understand. It's all about the defense and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's true. But you're also probably the same psychopath that pr- prays for a pitching duel too, right? I don't. Um, I just don't think those games are interesting. Oh, I mean, good defense. A, I mean, it's a balance, but right. I like. I. I mean, I would have liked to have seen some shots down the field that actually were successful. I think the most exciting catch that I saw was when Gronkowski caught it close to the end zone, and he was diving for the catch, and I was like, "Oh wow, okay, now something's happening." Right. And then n- nothing really happened. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think they scored a touchdown on that drive, but uh, I don't remember. Uh, I can't remember either. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> um. A defensive chess game is always a good game unless it's showcased in the Super Bowl. It's just just my opinion on that. Uh, I didn't hate the game. I just wasn't impressed with either team offensively. And watching Johnny Hecker pump over and over and over and over and over and over again uh, was just not fun to see. I don't really have much more to say on the Super Bowl other than – Yeah, I mean, if you're not complaining about it, that's probably because you're a Pats fan. Yeah. And, I mean, because just go back – To the Seahawks. Three years ago – the when, Broncos, uh, yeah, the Broncos Carolina game. Good God. Yeah, you know, and honestly, the Super Bowl that the Seahawks won was probably. Oh yeah, if you were a Seahawks fan, that was probably a yeah. terrible Super Bowl. But you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, you know, like I was saying, I don't really have much more to say than other than uh, Tom Brady just shows us again that he's probably the greatest quarterback to ever play in his position. Yeah, and he's just solidifying it, man. That was an amazing defensive wise. Yes. I heard from Jay Chelsea says. Okay. <laughs> Devin says, are you going to do a next year pick Super Bowl pick? Seahawks win the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm going with the Browns. I'm going with the Seahawks. Uh, wish I was that dude that had 250 on the Rams. To Yeah, I saw that. So this guy bet uh, 250-something dollars, or maybe it was – I don't remember the exact number, but um, 250 on the Rams to have three points or less, and he banked 400k for it. What? Yeah, yeah. And Eric Dickerson, just saying. Eric Dickerson, man, he's one of the like best running backs ever, though. Eric Dickerson, you have more fun at funerals. Damn, bro. <laughs> Garbage. Ha ha. Three points. Come on, man. What was that? That was pathetic. All right. Hey, Justin, that's what I'm saying is is you don't come into the Super Bowl and score three points. 
it's just it's pretty sad, man. Well, apparently you do. If you're the L.A. Rams. Uh, oh well. The artist formerly known as St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I read online that KJ Wright's going to be walking into free agency for bargaining, uh, hmm. whatever it's called, bargaining. So he has like some kind of leverage against the Seahawks. Um, don't know how you feel about that. Don't know if you saw that. I didn't see that. Um, most of the <clears throat> news I've been listening to has been more about Frank Clark. Yeah. yeah we got to get that boy back. Yeah, and I, I I really think it's important that we that the Seahawks are able to figure out a new deal with them rather than trying to franchise tag. Him. Yeah, I'm tired of this franchise tagging thing, man. That's that's another topic I was gonna say. Uh, Nick Foles opted out of the uh, mutual opt agreement with uh, the Eagles, so uh, the Eagles can power play him and freaking slap a franchise tag on him so that they can get something in return for him. I think that's kind of BS, man. And if that's the game we're going to play, like, why not do that for Earl Thomas? You can franchise you, you tag him and have right. him. No, I'm talking about Earl Thomas. You can franchise tag Earl Thomas this year. Oh. The problem is, is you're going to have, if he doesn't go oh, anywhere yeah. else, right. if he doesn't go anywhere else, you're going to have one pissed off player filling up that roster spot. He's not going to be a happy camper. But Earl Thomas is good enough that you could get something back for him. Well, and I've always, yeah, Earl Thomas is a great player. Yeah, love the guy. Absolutely. But how long has he been playing? I mean, it's uh, got to be over five years. It's got to be over five years. Well, yeah, it's over five years. But I mean, is it wor- would it be worth taking that gamble on him? Or yes, I think so. Maybe I'm biased because I I love Earl Thomas that much. I don't know, but I think just think of how the defense played though. After think about was... how the defense played while he was there when they played against the Cowboys. Yeah. No, I mean, and he got like two interceptions that game. I the think. guy's a difference maker for sure. But yeah, he's a presence on the field all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't Until know he breaks works. his leg. Oh, man. I feel bad for you, man. It's bad news, bro. I hope Earl Thomas stays a Seahawk, but I think he's gone. Uh, yeah. Damn, son. Not KJ, bro. Dude. More people even want him as bad anymore. He keeps breaking his legs. Yeah, Devin, that's what I'm saying is not people. I meant teams. Yeah, I got what you're saying. I'm The dude is even – he came back from his leg injury last year, and he played a couple games this year, and when he was on the field, he looked good. He looked good. Yeah, I'm just – and the, it's a bad taste for them to have his leg break in the situation that they were arguing over the contract the way that it happened. I probably would have flipped off the Seahawks' sideline as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess with two leg injuries in two seasons in a row, though, will he come back and play as the same player? I do. He came back this year and played decent when he was playing. Yeah, I, so, yeah, I mean, he did. But then he got hurt. I think again. it's the same leg too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that like, yo, know, once you, you know, injured, wounded, whatever, whatever part of your body, you never really quite trust it as much as you used to. That's true. But these guys are athletes that train to get past those things. Like when Cam Newton tore his ACL and came back, like. I don't yeah. even remember how quick it was, but, but it was insanity how quick he came back. That's true, but did he, um, you know, tear his ACL again the next season? I don't think he did. I, that's what I'm saying. This guy has had a leg injury to both I get to the same I leg. Get, I get what you're saying. You know, okay, and okay. it's just like, well, Christ, what's going to happen next year? I don't feel it. Okay. All right. Fair point, Eric. Fair point. So – then you're saying not worth franchising Earl Thomas. I I don't want to say that, 
because I mean, like you, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the guy, but I don't know. All right. I'm not, I'm just not as sure of it as you are. Okay. Uh, Dennis says he will make 27 million instead of 20 million for full smart move. Either way, he is under one year contract and gets paid big. If the Eagles let him go, I think so too. Nick Foles is playing this smart. I like that. And that oh, man is going to get drafted paid. in 2010. 2010. So it's been almost 10 years. Okay. So yeah, I think that would play into it a little bit too. That is a factor as well. The Falcons released <laughs> Matt Bryant, dude. I was surprised by this. Um, their longtime kick. He is pretty old, though. I think he's like 45. He's in his 40s. The kicker? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean. Who, who are we talking about? The kicker for the Falcons. The Falcons. Oh. Yeah. He no, was, I haven't. Right he's been a kicker that. for the Falcons for years, and they released him. I'm sure if I saw his face, I'd know you're talking about I think so, too. Um, And then the Bengals' new head coach, Zach Taylor, uh, had a press conference today. Congratulations to you Bengals fans out there for finally getting out from underneath the thumb of Marvin Lewis, man. I I I was saying this for like the last two, three years. That guy needed to go. How you been a coach that long and get them to the playoffs and not win one single playoff game and still be a head coach, man? That's savage. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. And then there are, there are teams that are like, oh, we had missed one year of the playoffs. We need to start looking for a new head coach. Yeah, I don't understand that. Don't get that one. Or you hire a guy, and he finally gets guys that he drafted into starting positions, and then you're like, bye. Yeah, right? Like, okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so much for that. All right, well, that's what I have for the NFL. If you got something to add, let's move on to another another sport. No, I'm good. All right, so another sport. Here we go. Tell me about what you got over there. Man, I have – Rugby stuff. Rugby stuff. I like it. Lots of it. Let's go. <clears throat> so it's so weekend in Sydney. There was a, a sevens tournament, so it was men and women's. So I'll start with the men's side. Uh, so I don't know if you know this. I don't know what position he plays, but Nate Ebner. Mm-mm. Yeah. Well, he plays for the Patriots. Okay. But he also plays on, or he played in on the U.S. Um, Olympic team in rugby. Okay. so That's cool. Yeah. Okay. Where are you at, Devin? You know this guy? Ebner? Yeah, Nate Ebner. E-B-N-E-R. Adam Vinatieri resigned. I like it. Yeah, no, we talked about that last week. Talked about that one last week. So in the men's uh, sevens, they take their fourth straight silver medal. And, That's uh, brutal, <clears throat> man. Yeah. And weren't they ranked one? They're still tied for one for first with Fiji. And but they didn't lose to Fiji this time, which is why they're still tied. They lost to uh, New Zealand. Okay. So the last four have been um, it was New Zealand, Fiji, Fiji, New Zealand. Okay. Or who they lost to. Yeah, Kevin was saying that uh back in the day you wouldn't have even thought that uh the United States would have been even in contention with these guys. So, Oh, with Fiji and New Zealand? Yeah. No way. Yeah, so and that's exciting. Just so everyone's clear, this is the New Zealand All Blacks. This is There is two teams in New Zealand. And that's also who they lost to the first time. So, <clears throat> In Dubai. Dubai. Okay, so they were in uh, Pool B. So they had to play uh, Kenya, France, and Canada. They shut out Kenya 41 to 0. I like it. They beat France 7 to 0. And then they beat Canada in a slightly closer game 36 to 14. Okay. Slightly closer. <laughs> Jeez. So. That's that's pool play. Next is the comes the quarterfinals where they have to play Spain. And they beat Spain 38 to 10. 
38 to 10. Yes. Dude, they're slamming it. Yeah. And these aren't – I haven't really followed Kenyan rugby, but, <laughs> I mean, these are good teams. Right, for sure. And uh, let's see here. Okay, and then in the uh, semifinals, they play England in a, a very heavily penalized game, and end up beating England fourteen to seven. Fourteen to seven. Yes, and that's then, close, dude. Yeah, real close. And it it was. I mean, it took until I think the sixtieth minute for. The USA to really, you know, to get the last yes, try yeah. and uh, walked away with the win. And then they fell to uh, New Zealand 21 to 5. 21 to 5. And okay. it wasn't that close. Whew. It was, it was, it was, a sh- it was a beaten. It was bad. Dennis says, What's the difference between rugby and Australian rules football? I don't know the answer to that. That's something that I would. There's. Have- quite a bit of difference okay but i don't really know that much about australian rules football okay so i think i've seen like two or three games so i can't answer that question okay um i'll look it up and i will get back to you on that dennis go ahead okay so that was a tough loss especially after placing second in the previous three. Yeah. But next there's a is the Las Vegas Sevens tournament and USA's in Pool B again. And they're gonna be there's gonna be two rematches in this one, Kenya and France, and then they're also gonna play Argentina. Okay. And that'll be in a month. Okay. Looking forward to that. If you guys aren't watching some rugby, man, I'm telling you, I got I got turned into it. Like, I'm I'm a fan of rugby now. I like I like it. It's super fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, if you once you get the rules, like, and I don't even really have the rules down, but once you get like the concept of the basics, like, yeah, it's really exciting. You really only need a rudimentary, yeah, knowledge of what's going on for it to be a really entertaining it's, game. It's a very entertaining game, and it doesn't, you know, I mean, if you like, you know, football or soccer or you know. Honestly, you you would like hockey, hockey yeah. Because a, a lot of the um, not scoring, but how the how the standings work. I mean, it has a lot of a lot in common with hockey. And I mean, they even have. I'll get to that when I cover Sea Wolves, but they ha- even have you know you can lose players. How in stuff depth? Like that. How in depth did you get with the Sea Wolves? Um, not super. Okay, so I mean, uh, I just took some quick notes on the game. There was only three games over the weekend, and the Utah Warriors topped Austin Elite Rugby seventeen to nine. Glendale Raptors fall to Nola Gold forty to thirty one, and Seattle traveled down to San Diego to play Legion and fell in a close match thirteen to seventeen. Go ahead and tell me what notes you got there. Oh, you want to go right to the yeah, Seawolves? Yeah, because I took down notes on the MLR. Oh, okay, all right. <clears throat> so, I think a big thing that happened in this game was the rain. Yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. Yeah, the rain. <clears throat> so, in rugby, you can't pass forward. You can only pass behind you. Or you can kick the ball to advance it down the field. And then you either... Basically, you're, you're kind of trying to get it out of bounds for a line out, and then that gives your team to get the ball. More of an opportunity on to get the ball. The other side of the field or yeah. wherever. So that's kind of the point there. And that's really the big way the ball was moved in this match. Because it's so heavily rained. Yeah. I it mean, it was so rained. It, it was bad. So at some points, it was. Almost hard to watch because <laughs> you the rain see. was coming down yeah. that hard. It was so crazy. I saw pictures of it, and there's pictures of these guys falling into these puddles of water, and it's just splashing everywhere. Rain's coming down on them. Yeah, it's insane. I can't remember um, the name of the San Diego player, what? but 
after he scores, he slides out of the the try zone, like the end zone, <clears throat> and almost goes head first into a cinder block wall. Crazy. Like 30 feet. It was a long ways. Um, so getting into the actual game, there was a lot of kicking back and forth, and it was it wasn't really until I think it was right around the 20th minute that the Legion got down on uh, the Seawolves side of the field and were within five meters of getting a try. And uh, Phil Mack, the scrum half, <clears throat> made a, a play on the ball on the ground. And when you're that close to the to the line, that it's a penalty and for player safety. And so he got not ejected, but he got sent to what's called the sin bin. Okay. For uh, ten minutes. It's like a penalty box. Yeah, like a penalty yeah. box. And so then the Seawolves had to play with fourteen people. Oof. Instead of 15. And because of that penalty, the uh, Legion got a penalty try and go up 7-0. to zero. A little bit after that, and I want to say maybe three or four minutes, the Seawolves <clears throat> kick a penalty kick, and that gives them three points. So it's 7-3. to three. And then Seattle was really playing like they... Momentum bit had shifted, but then the Legion scored another try. <laughs> right before the end of the first half, they get 14 to 3 at halftime. And uh, then pretty much as soon as the second half starts, Legion kick a uh, penalty kick. So it's 17 to 3 now. And then the Sea Wolves score their only try of the game right around 60 minutes and a game's 80 minutes long. <clears throat> so it's 17 to 10 and then they get one more penalty kick and the game ends 17 to 13. Brutal. Yeah. Big but shout it, out. It was, yeah. It was an exciting game yeah. to watch though. Big shout out to those Seawolves guys, man. You know, like if you guys aren't watching MLR, watch it. It's good stuff. Check it out. So Justin says that rugby has offsides and Aussie football doesn't. Aussie football has four quarters of 20 minutes and rugby has two halves of 45 minutes. Kenny says, what did you guys think of the Super Bowl? We went over it, but um, defensively good game, but disappointed in the conclusion. Should have been more points scored. Uh, Dennis says, with the ball going out, is that when they start a scrum? So I don't know the exact uh, reasons that, on that. That's a line out. A line out. Yeah, so the line outs are when it goes out of bounds and they take the guys and lift them up to try and fight for the ball in the air. Right. That's what the line out is. Uh, what's the difference between rugby football and American football rules? Go Seawolves. I don't think there are any differences. All the rules are the same. Rugby is American football. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it, it would yeah, – it's more entertaining sometimes. There's a lot more breaks in uh, American football than in uh, rugby. but uh, And you don't see as many uh, big – like. 350 pound dudes out there either right there. <laughs> very true um so sea wolves came out with a loss and that's too bad yeah but um you know but they are, even with that loss uh right now even though they only played two games they are still ranked third so it's all good still a long season yep goes still a long June. season so unfortunately though uh this Saturday, they're playing uh, New Orleans. They're and, high scoring right now. And they're ranked number one. Yeah. And it's in New Orleans. Good luck, Seawolves. Yeah. Rooting for you. Hope so. Um, 
If you guys did not catch our interview with Kevin Flynn, who is a manager for the Sea Wolves and uh, president of the Seattle Saracens Rugby Club, go back and check it out. Uh, we have it on the Game Changer Sports Network. I have it on YouTube. I have it on our page. Check that out. That guy's awesome. Yeah, he did a real good job yeah. of that. That was uh... – I think I've watched that three or four times now. Yeah, I've watched it a couple of times. I'm going to toot my own horn. But, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not hearing anything um, as far as the uh, MLB free agency circuits going. It's all still at a standstill from what I'm understanding. Well, do we want to finish rugby first? Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't know you had more. Oh, yeah. I got women's rugby and then men's 15s. Oh, yeah. Go for it. All right. So also in the same Sydney tournament, the <clears throat> uh, women played as well, and the women's Eagles, who are currently second in the world, I don't know who they're behind. They beat Russia seven to five, and then lost to New Zealand twenty nine to five in the semifinals, and then they win bronze. By beating Ireland twenty six to ten. Jeez. Okay. So, and that's kind of a big deal because Ireland is real, good. real good. Okay. Especially okay. in women's rugby this year. Okay. They're, they're pretty good. All right. Uh, last game was the men's fifteens game where the U.S. USA uh, played Chile, and they beat Chile seventy one to eight. I'm not going to go through, like, every score in the game, but um, I'll just go through some of the know, stats or whatever. Gazma, yeah, we talk about all kinds of sports, but right now we're talking about uh, just rugby. Right now we're talking rugby. So I'll do USA stats and then Chile stats. Okay. So USA scores 11 tries. They have eight conversions, zero penalty kicks, and they possessed the ball for 15 minutes and 11 seconds. Okay. They won 11 scrums, 12 lineouts, and had only six penalties. Okay. Chile had one try, zero conversions. They had they possessed the ball for 15 minutes and 12 seconds. They won eight scrums, 10 lineouts, and they had 12 penalties. Okay. So that's how that game shaped out. I like it. And then, uh, never mind. I can't remember off the top of my head who we're playing next. Talk about it next week. Yep. It's not for like another month, right? No, because I think it's in Dallas. Okay. And I want to say it's Argentina, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. So, um, like I was saying, I didn't know you were done with the rugby, so my bad. Well, it's all good. Um, I'm not hearing anything on the uh, free agency waiver wire, whatever you call it, free agency race or whatever you want to call it for uh, the MLB, unless you're hearing something. I'm not. You're not hearing shit. So, um, you know, Bryce Harper needs to figure out where he's going, bro. Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about it. I don't know. He's probably going to the Yankees or something like dumb. You think he'll go to the Yankees? No. I don't think he'll go to the Yankees. <laughs> It'd be cool to see him go to Philly. Philly's stacked this year. Mm. We'll see. Speaking of Philly, NBA, uh, Tobias Harris goes to the 76ers, and I think they're going to make them a huge favorite in the East. Uh, they also got <coughs> somebody else today, <coughs> but <coughs> I did not catch his name. I didn't see it, but 76ers are looking good. Okay. They got to interview the manager of the Seawolves. It was a good interview. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Tobias Harris is now with the 76ers. They're going to be crazy good. Word surfaced yesterday that the Los Angeles Lakers pulled out of the Anthony Davis trade because talks became too outrageous for their demands by New Orleans. 
So basically trade your whole team and like eight draft picks for Anthony Davis. And hmm. I like seeing that because I'd like to see him go to Boston with Kyrie. I think that'll make things a little bit more interesting. Uh, John Wall is out for 12 months after falling at home and rupturing his Achilles. Ooh. Man, tough break. Uh, speedy recovery for you, John Wall. Sorry, man. Tough break. I got a top five ranking. Uh, one's Golden State, two's Milwaukee, three's Denver, four's the Raptors, and five is the Celtics. And I think the Celtics are going to be on the rise. The 76ers are going to start r- rising too. Uh, it's getting crazy. Hey, Nick, you going to join the Army again? Nice fade, bro. No, man. Those days are behind me. <laughs> Those days are behind me. So that's uh, that's what I got for the NBA. You got anything on the NBA? So not checking yeah. in on it? Yeah, I did. Just not interested? I'm not. I tried. It's all good. Hey, man. It's all good, man. The NBA is not the same it used to be for me because I don't have a team. Yeah. Rest in peace. Bring them back. Speaking of which, yeah, pour one out. No, not that. S- sp- yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the documentary um, uh, Sonic Skate. You seen that? I haven't even seen it. You haven't seen it? Bro, you need to watch it. Oh my goodness. Um, so I uh I reached out to they got an Emmy for that, by the way. But um I reached out to him and uh his name's Jason Reed. And I reached out to him and hopefully he gets back to me about uh talking with us some supersonics. I'd be excited about that. They yeah, were all excited. That would be cool. And uh, unfortunately, Robbie Tobeck did not get back to me in time for us to do an interview with him. So I hope we can reschedule with him and talk with him uh, here soon. That would be really exciting. And I do want to talk to Robbie about the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl he was in, all that fun stuff. <laughs> Talking about Seahawks. But uh, NHL. Or the one he was in with Atlanta. Oh, yeah. That, the one he was in with Atlanta as well. Uh, the NHL, Brian Boyle was traded to Nashville by the Jersey Devils today for a second-round draft pick in the 2019 draft. And Miko Koivu is out for the rest of the season for the Wild. And I don't wish an injury upon anybody, but being a rival of the St. Louis Blues, I like seeing that the Wild are going to have some trouble. So All right. go Blues. Go notes. I got a top five ranking for the NHL. I got Tampa Bay Lightning is one. Calgary Flames is two. Winnipeg Jets is three. San Jose Sharks four. And Toronto Maple Leafs five. Man, I'm getting excited. We're getting close to that time when we're talking some playoffs, dude. Oh, yeah. I like it, dude. Uh, Do you got anything more to add for NHL? I can't say that I do. Can't say that you do. All right. So, I mean, we got some downtime to talk about whatever, or we can cut it short. What you talking about? What am I talking about? Yeah. Hmm. I'm up for some questions, too. I don't care. Good. Yeah, if anybody wants to ask us some stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, dude, if uh, – if, uh, Jason Reed ends up getting on here. That would be really cool, man. I'd like that. be cool. Uh, Sonic Skate. Yeah, yeah, I'm connecting the dots here. <laughs> um, I am going to the 79 uh, NBA Championship uh, Seattle Supersonic signing on Saturday. I'm also uh, excited about that. And speaking of which, he just emailed me. Did you nice. see that? Yeah. That's funny. I didn't read that, but. Yeah, so he just reached back to me. But, um, yeah, so looking forward to it. Um, You know what we should do, man? Uh, Not right now, but next week or maybe the week following, we could uh, spit out some uh, top fives in every position on, uh, like, NFL or something like that. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Absolutely. Um, Does anybody got anything else to add? I'm trying to – 
I feel like we're excited excited about baseball right now. Baseball's coming up, dude. I think the Mariners are going to do a lot better than than everybody's anticipating. Man, I don't think they're going to do that good. (laughs) But I... I just can't help but be excited, though. Me too, man. I mean, I, I, I just, I love baseball. So I love baseball too. I just, I, I oh, yes. What <laughs> pitchers were pitchers and catchers report in a month for so, spring training? Yeah, for spring training, and then a couple weeks later, then spring training is going to be full. full pardon swing. the pun, but full swing, and yeah, baby. I can't wait. I'm excited. Oh, it's gonna be. You think the the uh, Red Sox are going to another World Series? Early call. Where are we going? I want to say yes, <laughs> but no, I don't think it was a play. I, I, <laughs> okay. I, I I mean, it's it's just there's a lot of baseball to play, yeah, so we'll see. Hey, man, I like but, to get bold statements out of you. I, uh, I <laughs> <laughs> but well, you already got one. The Browns are winning the Super Bowl. That's next right. Year. The Browns are winning the Super Bowl next year, guys. Yeah. Eric said it first. Yeah. <laughs> Put your money in now. Yeah. That's right. uh, <laughs> no, I, I think they have a uh, definitely a good shot to go to the playoffs again, and you know, mm-hmm. barring injuries or you know suspected PED use or whatever I think they could probably make another good run at the at the World Series again next year too I know probably nobody wants to hear that after watching the Patriots win but hey it is what it is I don't care just as long as somebody other than a Boston team wins the NBA championship and the NHL Stanley Cup I'll be okay I don't think the Celtics are winning. <laughs> I don't think the Celtics are winning either, but they do look good right now. They do look good. I don't think the Celtics are winning. I also don't think that... Yeah, but uh, how good is the Eastern Conference? Well, with the 76ers getting these guys, the 76ers are probably going to win the Eastern Conference. That's just my opinion here, though. I'm going to say that. I'll say that. Yeah. I, okay. I'll believe you because I haven't been watching the NBA. Hey. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. How far do you think the Zags will go in March Madness? Man, ben, I, I hope they win the whole thing. I like seeing Gonzaga do good. Um, Honestly, I think they're going to make it to uh, eight. Elite eight? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see them go farther, but... I think they'll probably make it to four. Think so? Yeah. Because I was kind of going back and forth on that, honestly, because I could see them going... <laughs> To the final four, but I I think the safer bet would be the Elite Eight. Elite Eight, yeah, I can see that. Um, the real question is where the Husky is going to land. Yeah, I they just uh, I just saw in the AP poll they just missed the top twenty five. Yeah, they're pushing it. So they're they're I think they're at twenty six. Twenty six is what they had them at, if I remember right. Yeah, I think so. I'm not 100% positive, but yes, and Justin Howard Schultz is running for president apparently, and we need to boo this man. Boo. That's not funny. It's not funny. It's not good. But yeah, the uh, Huskies are looking good. Um, Zags are doing good as well. Uh, I like to see a, a Washington team go pretty far in the March Madness tournament this year, but um, unfortunately, uh, Duke looks really good this year. Yeah. Unfortunately. I feel like they're the, like, Alabama of college basketball. Well, what did their women's team end up with? Like, having, like, 160 wins? I don't know if that was Duke. Was like that, that Duke? I'm not sure if that was Duke. I thought that was Duke. I don't, I don't know. I think it was uh, – Penn State or UConn. I think it was no, UConn. No, it was UConn. Yeah, UConn. yeah, you're right. Yep. UConn. My mistake. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to March Madness. That's coming up quick. That's going to be fun. I love talking March Madness, man. I'm excited for that. But I don't really pay, like, super attention to, like, the regular season that they have because they play a bunch of tournaments, and then that's how, like, the – Stuff gets broken down, so. 
Yeah, I don't – I'll watch college basketball, but I don't, like – Follow it week to Yeah, week. I don't sit down and be like, oh, man, the Huskies are playing. I got to watch. Yeah, yeah. You know, if it's on, I'll watch, but – I'm with that. I'm on the same boat as you. Um, I don't know if you're still here, Ian, but hi, I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you joined. Um, yeah, so – where are you going? Where Where do you think uh, the Zags will end up? You said eight. That's yeah. where you thought eight. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, I mean, we just talked about you know the you know rugby and having the four silver silver medals. medals. Yeah. I mean, how hard is that for Gonzaga to you know what make it to what sixteen like four or five times and then eight a couple of times yeah. and then. The final four, you know, a handful of times, but never it's quite being able to get every single time, man. man. It's rough. I mean, um, and they are at a disadvantage being, you know, a private school, right. but still. I like. Um, I spent a lot of time in Kansas, and I got to go to like five or six Jayhawks games while I was down there. I like watching them. So I always pull for them when uh, March Madness goes, but I don't ride the I think they're going to win championships wave like a lot of other people do. But Kansas is a good team. I like them. They're a good team. Yeah. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Uh, Soccer starting up soon, baby. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, Yeah, but go Sounders. What about the new rules in baseball? So I didn't read this, but I saw that it happened. I didn't read exactly what the new rules were proposing, but from what I understand, it's pretty crappy. Did you hear about this? I did hear about it, but then I missed the article on – because they were talking about it on um, 710 today. Okay. What did they say? I don't know. I had – I got to work before I could Universal the... DH makes sense. It's time for the National League to make a switch. Is that what it is? Pace of game changes. You slide rule. New rules redefining what constitutes a legal slide trying to break up a double play and two additions to pace game. The slide rule... And pace of play. I see. I I don't like it when they go to the mound as long as they do. Man, speed up the game a little bit more. You know what? I my go my, ahead. my argument on that is is you've already kind of like kind of diminished the whole pitcher standpoint when you automatically walk a guy and don't make him throw four pitches because that's four extra pitches that the guy throws on his arm instead of just throwing one and saying, hey, there's a walk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I, I don't – visiting the mound doesn't bother me because I get it. You know, it, that's – how you make player adjustments that's how you do stuff i I mean i I think that's an important part in baseball i agree but the same i don't want to sit here and watch them talk but not hear what they're saying for three minutes i don't know how long it's how long the the cap is but yeah but i mean is is at the same time on why don't you give them timeouts on the flip side of the coin, is it any more or any less frustrating when you see a big hit in the NFL and you're like, there's going to be a flag on that? And there is, and then, you know, it's the same thing. And that just, I agree. You know, those penalties just stop the game. And whoa. It says pitchers must throw to three hitters. Pitchers will have to throw to three, three batters as one. That was one of the new proposals. That's horrible. 
Oakland. Pitchers must when, throw to three hitters. Yeah. Ooh. That's rough. Yo, I can't co-sign that one. No. That's dumb. That's real dumb. Now, I guess I would just need a little bit more information. I mean, does that count like you have to throw three strikeouts? Or... No, you have to face three batters when you come to the mound. That's what it says. Uh, yeah, you have to. So you can't no. come out. Yeah, so you. No. Can... no wow. Okay, so that. like, just just for the sake of argument, so I don't like it. I think it's a dumb idea. You can't throw in a right-handed or a whoever pitcher right. who pitches better against left-handed batters right. to face one guy. Dude, that's one of my arguments. That I was going to say, just for argument's sake, though. Like, I totally disagree with this, but just for argument's sake, what about the fact that? you do bring in those guys to face in one person. And then these guys, you remember how we were talking last year about how um, they add so much depth to their bullpen for that specific reason at the end of the season. Oh yeah. In September. Yeah. So I, I kind of like that idea just to defeat the purpose of them filling their roster with a deep bullpen like the athletics did. I don't like it on a strategic point of the fact that a, you have purpose pitchers to come in to pitch two, three, like maybe a batter, maybe two batters in their lineup. You See, know what I'm saying? I, I think you can accomplish this if you're trying to get around that, you know, just add, you know, your whole AAA team in September randomly. Right. And then no one can prepare for it. And then, you know, teams that should be in the playoffs aren't in the playoffs. I do have a problem with that. But you can get around that by not having this pitching rule and just set a cap on the amount of players that you can bring up in September. I agree with that. Okay. I mean, if, because, and that's how it used to be. There wasn't a cap, but every team would bring up, you know, three, maybe four guys. And so it actually meant something to the triple A team. You know, you're actually, you know, playing, playing. for something yeah. and you're like, hey, you know, in September, I might get, you know, if I play real good, I might get the chance to play it. I mean, at least a month, you'll get some exposure in on the field. Yeah. Yeah. In a major league game. I Yeah, I don't like this rule. I don't like it. No. I don't like it, but yeah, good. just just for the sake of argument, doesn't that kind of like put a stick in the uh, in the idea that you just bring up your entire bullpen from AAA? Yeah, but I mean, it, if you also limited the number of players, I, I mean, agree with you. You could bring up three pitchers, or you could you. bring up two pitchers and a and a field, you know, an outfielder or whoever. Doesn't matter. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Wow. I have to think on that. Not really too much because it's a dumb idea, but I don't I'm trying to wrap my head around the reasoning behind it. Yeah, I'll have to do some more research on that and that's insane. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that would really change a lot of games. It really, really. would. Yeah. It'd make a huge difference. Huge difference. Wow. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Um, yeah, so I don't really have too much else to add. We're about almost up to an hour. Yeah, I ran through all my notes. I all couldn't right, find then. anything really on wrestling this year or this week. So, yeah. Um, guys, we're talking interference sports. I'm Nick. I'm Eric. Um, if you are going to a show or a sporting event, Go to SeekGeek, SeatGeek.com and use the promo code GCSN. Get you some $20 off of your purchase for those seats and go watch Justin Timberlake for $20 cheaper. Or the Mariners, or the Browns, or the Boston Red Sox, or Kesha. <laughs> or Kesha. <laughs> 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 Go to SeatGeek.com, use that promo code, get you $20 off. Um, uh, find us on YouTube, find us on Instagram, find us on all of this stuff. Hand me that box. 
Check that out. Hand me that box. We also went and got us some cards. We went and got us some cards. So if you're interested in spreading the word with some cards, send me a message anywhere, and I'll talk to you about getting some cards to spread around to your friends so you can talk about some sports with your friends in our live chat. We got business cards now. If a pinch hitter is used before the three hitter, you may again change pitchers. I believe that is what they're proposing. I went to Grand Old Opry. Okay. Well, I'll have to Opry. Grand Old Opry. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So I'll have to. I mean, I have to look into it. I don't know too much about it, but you know. Yeah, we'll look into it and get back to you next week. We're talking interference sports. Boom! Mic drop. Boom! Thanks for coming, guys. You guys are awesome.